When I was writing my new novel, Spinsterella, I was not only writing about an African-American goth, but a different approach to romance. In most romance novels, you usually have this hero who sees the woman from afar, and, you know, he makes efforts to try to impress her, or try to get her to notice him, or try to find some way to persuade her to see why he is the one for her. But in Spinsterella, I go in a different approach, because as I was writing books like those in the Simp trilogy, like Stop Simping, Why Men Don't Need Finance to Get Romance, Manginas, They Look Like Men But They Act Like Ladies, and The Misadventures of Captain Savaho, I began to understand that natural and organic relationships, you know, are approached very differently from the paradigm that is presented in your romance novels. And I wanted to write a story that fit a more natural and organic approach to relationships. And I noticed from what I was doing in my research and my own personal experience that usually when it comes down to romantic relationships, usually women tend to pick who they want to get involved with. And they usually know that from the first five seconds of looking at a guy. And usually in many cases, a woman will not will try to find a way to get that private moment with that guy to state her intentions. So that was what I put in the first couple of chapters of the Spinsterella novel. Now, with the Spinsterella Matilda character being a goth and an introvert, things take a little time for the, the to um, go to progress. So when it comes down to women, also I notice they'll take their time after that first five seconds of looking at a guy to find the right time to approach them and to state their intentions. And I wanted to show that in the Spinsterella novel um, regarding how women introduce themselves and how women approach things. Because to the contrary of what many men think, you know, they think that they're going to come here with this game. But oftentimes, again, women know who they want to get involved with within the first five seconds of looking at them. So they know who they want to consider a friend or, or who they want to consider a romantic interest. So the, the two are never going to meet. This is something many men don't understand. And I wanted, you know, to show how this approach, you know, works in real life because a lot of people, they go and watch the, read these romance novels and watch these romantic comedies and they think relationships work that way when in reality things just don't work that way. This is a more organic progression and usually, again, women pick the person they want to get involved with and they make efforts to, be, to spend time with that person. They will, you know, try to make a point of being in an area where this guy is, they'll try to, they'll learn his routine and find out, you know, what store he goes to or what place he's usually in. And they'll try to get that private moment so that they can, you know, state their intentions and let themselves be known. But many men don't understand that at all. They think that, you know, that um, they, they, they're going to use some macking game or some ladies man stuff. And that's going to get the attention of the woman. No, she already made up her mind. And she's just waiting for the right moment to let herself be known. And this is done through facial expressions, body language, nonverbal cues, and sometimes just her being in the right spot. She's oftentimes waiting for that right spot to be in so she can get that private moment. And usually when she gets that private moment, she's waiting. Some, some of them will sit there and wait for you to ask them to take them to coffee so they can, again, get more private moments with you so that they can show you their interest in verbal cues and nonverbal cues that they want a more romantic or intimate relationship with you. But in the Spinsterella novel, I show a different approach to relationships, and one of the reasons why I chose an African-American goth to sh is so that I can show how these approaches, you know, work, because people who live in alternative lifestyles and people who live outside of the mainstream they usually can see opportunities that the rest of us can't see. And they can see, you know, things and people that other people can't see. Because people in the mainstream are looking for people to fit into a box, to meet a certain standard. And they see, you know, what mainstream society would consider, you know, basic standard. Whereas an outsider would see what is great about a person that most people wouldn't consider great. They would see, you know, those intangibles regarding values and character, personality. They would see, you know, the humanity of someone and they would, you know, connect with someone on different levels. They would be able to connect with them 
on a more personal level, a more intimate level, and they would they would be able to you know get to know a person on different levels, and that's what forms you know a really close relationship. And this is why, you know, I believe mo many outsiders like your goths and people like that have long lasting friendships because they can see you know the internal content of a person's character not just you know these superficial standards that many people have regarding relationships um like um what type of car he has what type of job he has um how big is his house things like that this is not you know the standard that you know people who are outside many cases pursue people for they pursue people because they feel you know they they feel an instinctive natural attraction to someone they see things that they have in common with them and it's these internal intangibles that and external intangibles that allow them to form personal connections with people and that was one of the things that you know makes the spinsterella romance so great is that both of the characters have this really close relationship start forming this close relationship based on the internals um, regarding character and personality and values and not on stuff because I notice in most romances you know everything is focused on the guy taking the woman to the fancy restaurant driving the nice car wearing the expensive clothes and making efforts to impress her whereas what impresses the characters in the Spinsterella novel are those little things that they do for each other and those things that they do for each other in the relationship like supporting each other during a tough period because both characters are introverts and they make efforts you know to support each other as they try to overcome the fears that they have regarding things because in Spinsterella um, the Matilda character is an introvert and the Sean character is an introvert and what they do is that they try they support each other as they try to overcome their fears because what a lot of people don't understand about introverts is that they live inside their heads and when you're an introvert you pretty much are thinking things are worse than they actually are. Um, things are a little are are so going to be so bad if you go out and do them. And with the support of a, of a good partner, you start to go out and face those fears and understand that you know maybe things aren't as bad as they thought they were. And that was you know one of the catalysts for the novels that they both have to go out here and face their fears. They have to go out and deal with the unresolved issues that they have regarding their past, the unresolved issues they have um, regarding each other, and, you know, make those steps to move forward. And that's what I believe a good um, girlfriend or a partner will do in a romantic relationship. She is supposed to be a help meet and a support, and she's going to try to help support, you know, a man in trying to do what he needs to do in order to grow and to move forward and to you know, improve his quality of life, and he's going to help her, you know, try to support her in growing and moving forward and, you know, improving her quality of life. And that's what a healthy relationship, I believe, is. When two people come together and they work together to help each other, you know, bring out the best in each other. And that's something that I wanted to do with the Spinsterella story. I wanted to show how these two outsiders, these two misfits, um, bring out the best in each other. And it's not about, you know, finding a so-called perfect person, because neither one of them are perfect. It's about the um, their flaws and how those um, rough edges and textures that make them, you know, flawed people, you know, allow them to connect to each other, um, come together, and bring out the best in each other. And that's what I believe a great relationship, you know, features and is about. A great relationship, you know, brings out, the partners bring out the best in each other and they show, they help each other actualize their potential. Um, a great love is that when, you know, it's like a Christly love. Um, it's unconditional. Both partners love each other and they want to, and they care for each other and they want to see each other, you know, be the best person they can be. And that's what I believe a great romance is, and that's one of the reasons why I made I w was writing literally three chapters a day on this novel because I wanted to show, you know, a different approach to romance, a different approach to relationships, and you know, show a model that was completely different from your whining, dining, roses, um, horses and carriage type romance. 
uh, in Spinsterella, there is next to no money spent by either character in this story. And these two people come together, you know, during what many people call in the business world the dead period, which is from December 23rd to about January 15th or so. And that's considered, you know, the dead period. And so there's no Christmas gifts, no two-week anniversaries, no three-week anniversaries. Um, it's, it's just people coming together, connecting with each other, finding each other, and seeing what's great about each other. And I wanted to show that, you know, when people are naturally attracted to each other, it really doesn't take much time for them to form a relationship, to connect with each other, and to start, you know, forming a bit a bond with each other. And I wanted to show that because that's usually what happens during the natural progression of an organic relationship. It doesn't take much time for people who are naturally attracted to each other to state their intentions and let themselves be known and, you know, start really thinking about committing to each other. It doesn't take that much time. And a lot of people think it takes, you know, years and stuff for people to reach that point. No, usually when people are attracted to each other, it doesn't take that long for them to know that they, what they want to do if they want to make any sort of commitment to each other. It's not something that's just going to, you know, come to get, come out, you know, like that. Oh, it's going to be, you know, this guy has, he's taken five years to give you a wedding ring. Usually, again, like the woman knows within the first five seconds whether this guy is romantic material, usually a guy knows within about, you know, a couple weeks or even a couple months if this woman is, you know, going to be considered wife material. Usually a guy doesn't take that much time to know whether he wants to, you know, consider getting serious with someone. Now, your simp, he won't, he won't understand this because he's looking for a woman as a social currency piece and he's looking for, you know, status with a woman. Whereas when a man is pursuing a partner or help me, it's a different approach. He, and he knows looking at the values, looking at the character, um, and looking at the actions of a woman, whether or not he wants to, you know, consider her for a serious partnership and a relationship. So that was some of the reasons why I, you know, put this story together because I, again, I wanted to go with a different approach to romance. I had read a lot of romance novels. I'd read a lot of, um, black fiction back from the nineties. And I always saw the same dysfunctional paradigm in all of them. And after I wrote Stop Simping and the Simp Trilogy, I wanted to go in it and show a different approach to relationships. And I wanted to show, you know, and what people would call, and I used offbeat characters so I could show that different approach and show, you know, how people have natural relationships um, with attraction, with desire, with chemistry. Um, and I wanted to show how people form, you know, connections with each other. And while I was doing that, I wanted to, you know, make a commentary on how introverts uh, approach relationships and how introverts approach romance. And that even with these two people being outsiders and misfits, there is, you know, hope for anyone. It just requires them to have the courage to come out of themselves, to face their fears, and you know, have the courage and the character to go for what they want because that's what someone who really loves themselves will do. They will go for what they want, try to, you know, make that connection and they will learn eventually that there was nothing to fear but fear itself. Now you can pick up Spinsterella on Amazon.com in paperback and in Kindle. It's a great love story. It's a great comedy. There are a whole lot of laughs in this book, um, in addition to the love story and, and the story of an African-American goth. And it's an overall great book, and I'm urging you, you know, to go pick this up, because this is a very unique novel, um, a very fun novel, and a very entertaining story. And it'll give you a different perspective on romance.